Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Wonderful, wonderful people and the ministry that you're doing. May the Lord bless you. We are glad to be here this afternoon. The Lord is good. Amen. Did you turn to your neighbor under your mask and you welcomed them? Look at them with eyes that are saying, I am not against you. I am for you. You're welcome in this place in the presence of the Lord. I give you an opportunity to turn to your neighbor to the right and to the left, even as we go into hearing God's word. Amen. I am one person who is persuaded that everything that we see and everything that we have, everything that we own is given by God. Amen. If you subscribe to that school, say amen. I am also coming from a place where we used to say that everything that I have, there is nothing that I have that I can give that was not given to me. Amen? And that's what I believe even this very, very afternoon, that everything that I am, all that I have, all that I know is God-given. The air that you breathe, the clothes that you wear, everything that you have, it is God-given. The job that you do and the business that you're doing that is thriving during this crisis, it is God who has given it to you. And so we can come with that heart of gratitude and just say thank you to God. And that's my message. I am finished. Just coming to say thank you to God. Over the couple of days gone by, we have been meeting in places uh, where we meet in our different uh, um, ministries and groups and um, networks. And one thing that has continued to resurface every time we have met is that we are grateful for what God has done. Who would have known that 20th of December, 2020, we would be alive? And so we have every reason to thank God. I want to appreciate Bishop in absentia and Pastor Alice who is here for giving us this opportunity just to come here and share God's word and to bring us up in the ways of God as we continue to minister. It is not uh, to be taken for granted. I am excited that we have the privilege to do this. We want to briefly go into um, an account in the Bible, in the book of Luke, chapter number 17. And before we turn there, allow me to say this. This is just one person who comes to say thank you for what God has done. And we will see just a bit of how giving thanks uh, makes things different for you and for me. Before we even get into scripture, um, I, I, I love chapati. I think... <laughs> It is not a secret. My friends have said it when I had not given them permission to say it, but I am not hurt. It is true. I love chapatis. Now, before I got uh, uh, married, and when we were in courtship with Esther, I knew Esther knew how to do chapatis. And I said, God, aren't I a lucky one? <laughs> that you, you continue to confirm these things as we go by. And as we have come along the way, um, it's, it's not the every other day meal that we make in our house. And so when it is made, I am very careful to recognize and say thank you. It is in my house. I might have bought the unga. I might have done all those, but I say thank you. So that, and I have realized it works. If you appreciate, <laughs> say thank you. They might make it again and again and again. And life becomes good for me. Now, those are human beings. Well, for me, I think it is good when somebody comes to say thank you. I don't know whether it's... Do you feel nice when somebody comes to say thank you? Okay, let me ask the parents who are here. Parents who are here, you decided to give birth to your children, isn't it? Ah, is it true? Yes, and God honored that desire, and they came, the children came. <laughs> and I know you don't have the children who ask, did I apply to be born? You know, there are children who ask parents that way. But when they come to you, you who decided to give birth to them, and they appreciate you for being their parent, how do you feel? Do you feel nice about it? You don't demand. You don't go telling them, you need to come back and say thank you to me. I've taken you to high school, see what you've done, and I've paid your school fees. <laughs> that is your work. But when they come to appreciate what you had to do, they acknowledge what you have done, there's something that happens in their inside. Okay. Anybody who feels nice when they appreciate you for what you knew you were supposed to do. It was your obligation. It was your duty to do it. But somebody came and appreciated you. You feel good about it? Great. Now, we have a God who feels the same. 
He has created us. He owns us. He has provided for everything that we needed, including life and life eternal. But he is excited when we come back to him to say thank you. I said I have finished my, my, my sermon because that's a, just, just, just about it. But I want to say, yesterday I was privileged to, to be sitting next to people who are giving thanks. I know from the morning, as we started in the morning with the men in prayer, and then we came to the G12, I went into another meeting that had five ladies. And they had just come to say thank you. They said, as we say thank you, we need the presence of a pastor. So that whatever they say, the pastor says, it is true. So my work was, <laughs> we are thanking God for this. Yes. And they continued to narrate. And we were seated for an hour plus as they narrated what God has done for them and appreciating that God has been faithful. And that brings me to our message, which is found in the book of Luke, chapter number 17, from verse number 11 through to 19. When Jesus comes into the scene, and before we go into it, in the book of Luke, chapter number 4 and verse number 18, it talks about Jesus coming and why he came. And he comes because, and he says as he is introduced into the scene, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, has anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim the, to the captives freedom, and to release or to bring healing to the blind, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. And purely that is why Jesus came. He comes to do that. It is his work. As he comes from heaven, he says, I'm coming to do this. And actually he does it in his ministry work. Now the scripture we're about to read here in the book of Luke, chapter number 17 and verse number 11, Jesus is doing what he came to do. He is in his ministry work. And his scripture says that he was traveling towards Jerusalem and he needed to go through or he decided to pass through uh, Samaria and Galilee. He says in the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he went by, healing the people, declaring the acceptable ear of the Lord, setting the captives free, doing all that he came to do, which was his work, he comes to this place that we are reading in the book of Luke chapter number 17, verse number 11 to 19. If you give us, we're going to read together in the New Living Translation. This is what it says. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. It says, as he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14 says, he looked at them and said, go show yourselves.